So the story behind the number, each week we're going to be looking at the players and athletes from around the world, from British baseball to any sport you can think of, to see what is the meaning behind their chosen shirt number. It could be to remember somebody. It could be to honour your favourite athlete or sporting person. But if you've got a really interesting story behind why you've chosen the jersey number that you wear, I want to know about it. So get in touch, British Baseball Podcast at gmail.com or hit me up on the uh, socials at Brit Baseball Pod and find out how you can submit your story to me for everyone to listen to. Cheers. And here with me today to talk about his jersey number and the meaning behind it is Glasgow Comets and the Ball Caps and Bag Types host, John McKellar. John, how are we doing? I'm very well, Matt. Thanks for having me on. It's a lovely day here in the suburbs of Glasgow. How is it doing there? Sunny Salford is miserable, but it's uh, <laughs> kind of bright. <laughs> but we, we, uh, we play with the cars that we're dealt with. Exactly. So uh, thanks for coming on to, to uh, share your story behind your jersey number. Uh, so you, you've had two that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I have. Um, it goes back to when I first started watching baseball back in 2001. Uh, so just 20 years ago. <laughs> um, as a teenager, um, I've told the story of how I became interested on your show before, so I won't yeah. bore people with that. Um, my first jersey number was number two. And my current jersey number is number 35. Uh, both those numbers correspond to players that were on the Yankees uh, that year, uh, the year I fell in love with baseball and with that team. Um, number two speaks for itself. It's Derek Jeter. Um, he was just, you know, magnetic. I immediately was obviously drawn towards him, like so many millions of fans were back then. Um, so that one, I mean, that, that kind of doesn't really require any explanation. Um, the number I wear now, so we changed our jerseys up a couple of years back and uh, we decided to keep numbers 1 through 15 open for rookies and people who come along um, that don't have a jersey yet. So we had to change our numbers and we were told it has to be a number between 16 and 99. Well, because of, of course, if I can't have number two, I wanted number 15 <laughs> for Thurman Munson. But I thought long and hard that I wanted to pay tribute to another Yankee, being that I'm... You know, I've been a Yankee fan for pretty much as long as I've been a baseball fan. And I racked my brain and then I thought to myself, who was it in 2001 that really made me fall in love with the team? Was it Derek Jeter? Not really. You know, I love Derek Jeter, but it was one night in particular that really made me uh, buy in. And it was uh, Sunday, September 2nd, 2001. Mike Musina almost pitched a perfect game at Fenway Park. He came one strike away. I believe it was literally three and two uh, with two away and then the Red Sox hit a single in the ninth to, to break up the perfect game. The Yanks did win the game one nothing. Um, but to watch him that night, it was like watching an artist paint their masterpiece. It was just incredible. It was the first pitching performance it saw, that I saw live. You know, obviously I was staying up way past my bedtime uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> watching on Channel 5 and uh, I was watching that live. And I had it, rec- I recorded it as well. I used to record all the games with the VCR back in the day, um, which is a, a relic for the past. Um, so I watched that game again and again and again, just watching it, just admiring Mike Messina. And he became my, my favourite sort of Yankee, my favourite current Yankee, if you will, even retired 14 years ago. But, um, you know, he's my favourite Yankee that I've ever watched. So that's where I decided to pick the number 35 from. Um, Mike Messina is the, is the reason for that. The performance that night and then watching him pitch so consistently for the following kind of eight seasons, he was always Mr. Kind of Reliable. You, you, you never saw him lose his, lose his head. You know, he was always very calm on the mound. He was, it was quite a dry, sarcastic humour as well. He just it seemed like a, a really interesting guy. He was super intelligent, you know, he had like PhD this and that and went to Stanford and all that. So he just came across as a really, a guy that, that, kind of represented what the Yankees are supposed to be about. So I became a massive Mike Messina fan there. And that's why when I when the time came to choose my jersey number again, it was number 35. Was there any competition for it? Did you have any mm. doubts that you were going to no. not get it? No, I think I got my request in pretty quickly. Andy Vaughan, one of my teammates, he had pretty much hoovered up 99 uh, <laughs> as a tribute to Wild Thing. Vaughan, there were a couple of numbers retired, like Geo Coulter, his number was retired. And rightly so. So there were a couple of numbers that were unavailable, but the number 35 that I picked was no one had any interest in it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Except me, I was desperate to get number thirty-five. So when when I did get it, I was thrilled because I like I like to pay tribute to some of my favourite guys uh, from when I was growing up. Like if it wasn't thirty-five, it'd probably been thirty-six for David Cohn. You know, that's kind of the significance for me is the guys that made me fall in love with the game when I was thirteen years old. I want to pay tribute to them when I'm when I'm playing it now. So that's where that's where that came from. That's cool. You say then you've got some jersey numbers retired in Glasgow. The Comets won't won't assign number fourteen because it's uh, it's retired for Geo Coulter. He, he was just he was a, a part of Glasgow baseball for about twenty years. Um, he retired just a couple of years ago, and uh, it's just a tribute to how 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 amazing he was as a servant to the to the club in general, but particularly to the Comets. You know, he played for us. He was one of the original roster. And then he managed us as well when we were in a bit of a pinch. Uh, we had our original coach, Jazander. He moved uh, down south. And then there was a just a couple of years of upheaval. You know, it was like such and such will take over, or such and such will take over, and then Geo took over for a couple of years and kind of tried to steady the ship a bit. Um, so he was just such a, a presence around uh, Glasgow baseball. Um, until I retired uh, just a couple of years ago, that I think it would be madness to to not retire his number. Yeah, well, great tribute, lovely stuff. Yeah. Well, John, uh, thanks again for for joining the segment. Where can we find you next? All caps and bagpipes every Tuesday at nine pm. It's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, and it's now on Twitch. So if you just search ball caps and bagpipes on those, you can you can tune in. Uh, it's a live webcast and then there's an audio podcast uh, you can also find me um, on Twitter at the Ball Caps and Bike Pipes Twitter, um, it's just at Caps and Pipes Excellent stuff, John, take it easy Thanks again Matt, see you soon